up for Austin Oldfield again today. Meeting up with the Wind River Search and Rescue. They're going to be diving several small lakes near where Austin's camp was. It was supposed to be stormy today, but well, it's still pretty rainy. Uh, but I think a lot of the forecast forecasts were for the storm yesterday, and it was pretty rainy and stormy, windy uh, the last couple days, last few days actually. But all the forecasts I see for this morning say pretty mild wind, like seven miles per hour. Uh, so just looking at a lot of rain today. I just met up with one of the county deputies who is one of the leaders of the search and rescue team. About six other members showed up for this search today and we're driving up now to some lakes that are up near the restrooms where Austin Oldfield was last seen. It's interesting to hear a number of new details and they actually had a photo that I hadn't seen before too of him jumping out of the back of the truck. Evidently the, the people that gave him a ride must have taken the photo <clears throat> and that they said he was acting really bizarre um, and that he was looking for water and that he said he was following the magic balloon that had the ship under it. And that doesn't sound like mushrooms to me. Uh, it could be LSD or it could be some sort of a other psychosis, I guess you'd call it. Um, uh, because, as one of my commenters pointed out, and usually shrooms will just make warp things, warp your image. Uh, you can feel like things are alive. Uh, but as I demonstrated in one of my earlier videos, that it, that's more like an LSD experience. Although that's you know everybody's experience is different. I've never experienced those things, so it's just my imagination. Uh, however, he was manifesting objects in his hallucination. Uh, so, it's really hit neither here nor there because people who get lost and disappear like this are often found in random places. There's, there's really no rhyme or reason as somebody was pointing out this morning. And like I've kind of tried to guess where he might have gone. Um, and I don't know, it's still possible, but I really feel like the more, the, now that I have more information, he could have went in pretty much any direction from there. My name is Carl Johansson. I'm with the Skamani County Dive Team. And uh, today we're up in the National Forest here in an area to look and search for uh, what we uh, believe is a person who's missing in, in this area. Um, it's been quite a while, so there are some lakes up here. And our mission today is to search those lakes and make sure that uh, the person didn't possibly fall and drown in those places. Why are you searching now? Uh, we're searching now uh, just because that's when the sheriff's office decided to send us up here. Um, it's not necessarily a timing thing. It's more for uh, when the decision was made uh, to, to actually come up into this area and look due to evidence that probably has been gathered. All right. Can you tell me about the, the area that, we're gonna, that you're going to be searching? Uh, the area that we're going to be searching is an area somewhere in the 4,000 foot range. Um, uh, there are uh, groups of about eight lakes here. None of them are overly large, but uh, they all have their own challenges to them. Um, some of them, we've been in one of them before. Uh, one of the people have, uh, but other than that, they're, they're all unknown lakes. We hope to see if we can penetrate. 
infiltrate them, and maybe snorkel some of them, or uh, dive others. This is a possible uh, picture that was given to the sheriff's office uh, of, of an individual that was picked up that does match some of the descriptions of the individual we're looking for. Uh, it's not 100% conclusive that this is him, but this is something that we have up in this region. This picture was taken not far from here. Surprised we didn't have the hunters up here. There were some, but not the see how bad it was. Okay. Yeah, it's in uh, one of my boxes. In a plastic bag, there's two boxes. The bigger box has a marker. I got one here for you, otherwise. You want to be inside or outside going around the way? Uh, I have no well, I'll, I can go up inside as far as I can see to the shore. Okay. And then you go as far as this really allows you. Allows us to okay. really look good. Mark, what's your air? 2,500. Low pressure 80, so. Mud, mud stirring, we're probably going to be all right. Huh? Once we get away from our mud here. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. Okay. I'm ready. I'll let you get a little further out okay. now. Fair warning, what I'm about to speak about is pretty graphic. When they're out searching like this, what they're looking for, of course, is a, a body. And what might happen to the body is that it could sink within a day or a few days, uh, and then it might decompose and then raise back to the surface. surface and then after um, animals can... can uh, pick at the body and then uh, it will sink back down to the bottom and during that stage when it floated to the top a body floats to the top it can be blown anywhere around the lake so it's just really could be anywhere uh, when they're looking out looking for a, a victim right now they're in there's a team of two divers circling around this lake and they're doing the outside and perimeter and then going Further in, they've got a man on shore uh, who has a lifeline and can throw in or wait in or get they give further assistance as needed. And then uh, Sergeant Gonzer is on shore in case they find something, then they're not to disturb the scene at all. They're just to report back and then he can go in and investigate himself. That way they're not wrapped up in a court case uh, witnessing or, or testifying about evidence that they found. That bottom's pretty hard packed. You're, he's going to be on top. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, some of the areas that you... There's a lot of cutbacks underneath here. Some I've been of the areas that you never know were not exposed. I mean, this water raised up a couple feet in the last couple of days. So, chance are he's going to be out a little farther than there. 
Yeah, and if it was last year, October, that was a lot much drier fall too. So he would he'd be probably possibly way out. Well, hit some deeper water and see what you got. Good viz. Uh, you know what do you think? Ten feet maybe. Yeah. I can see mark at ten feet, and that's about it. Lots of snags all around. Actually, right. Yep. There's not much on the bottom. We found. I found uh, kid's shoe, a couple of pop cabs. We had a paddle from a boat. I don't know if you found yeah, anything paddle, else. Lots of fishing stuff. A little bib from a kid. That's good. Good enough. Perfect, thank you. All right. Are you doing temperature-wise other than your hands? No, I'm, I'm okay. Just hockey, you know. Yeah. Makes my hands sensitive. It's funny because it makes my cool. shoulder sensitive. Starting to feel a little bit, but I'm good for a while. Okay. Temperature says 40. dove around the lake uh, side by side with invisibility of each other trying to clear the perimeter of the lake and then we made a couple passes across the lake coming back uh, trying not to cover the same ground at the same time using compass and uh, so far uh, haven't found anything other than a lot of debris that we normally found in the lake uh, which shows that we, we are seeing things but uh, not finding what we're actually looking for. Why do you do this? Why? It's challenging. It's a good group of guys. Um, you know, most of us do this because uh, a lot of people can't. Uh, but uh, it's, it's challenging, and it's it's a good group of uh, guys that get together and uh, work together as a team. I really like working with a team of guys that uh, all pull in the same direction. <laughs> what was the temperature like, and how does that? I think my uh, my temperature gauge read right at 40 degrees. Yeah. So it was uh, it was cold, but uh, it's doable for a little while. And you're in a wetsuit, right? I am in a wetsuit. And uh, you're drinking coffee there? Yeah, and I don't drink coffee. I don't <laughs> like coffee, but after a cold dive, it's it's fun. What happened? What's the news? So we uh, dove the lake. We did as many patterns as we could. Um, 
We never say we covered anything 100% because it's impossible to, to do that with visibility and conditions. Uh, but we, we gave it a pretty good cover. We also had guys cover uh, with snorkels several uh, of the other lakes that are around here and so far uh, we've come up empty. How often, I mean, how does that make you feel when that happens? Well, oftentimes we do go out and, uh, and, and look and search and we don't always come back with what we uh, hope to find. Um, but our job is to go out and, uh, and to do the best we can to search an area, search different regions of the water and uh, come up with a conclusion. Um, again, it's, it's, you, know, you could do this maybe three or four more times and come up the same way or possibly find it. Uh, but we, we, we had pretty good visibility, so at least where we went, we were finding items that were small. So uh, if, if he would have been there, if there would have been a, a person's body there, I think we would have found it in the areas that we covered. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's like this. Sometimes we actually find what we're looking for, and sometimes, um, you know, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's a matter of uh, finding that uh, this is not where the individual is. Do you know if what's... Do you know what's going to happen next? To the... No, that's up to the sheriff's office. Um, it, you know, it's possible we could come back and, and, and do this again. Um, that'll be up to the sheriff's office to decide, um, you know, process what we've done, process what ground crews have done, and, and go from there. All right. That's a deep subject right there. Uh, everybody's got an opinion about that, you know? Been years worth of research and